prior to the 1920s. If you walked off into the forest for a week or two, you were probably hunting or fishing, cutting trees, maybe looking for gold, something practical. Backpacking was not yet a thing. But by the 20s, the emerging middle class had more leisure time, and walking long distances, just for the fun of it, started to catch on. Leading, in 1922, to the founding of the Adirondack Mountain Club, where the first order of business was the construction of a long-distance hiking route through the Adirondacks. And they didn't mess around. By 1924, a rough trail had been marked and cut, leading from Northville in the south to Lake Placid up north. Covering a distance of around 140 miles, you could reach both ends by train. In those days, you didn't jump into your car and drive off to the Adirondacks for a day of hiking. There weren't that many cars, and it was a long, slow drive from pretty much everywhere. The original route was stitched together from a network of old paths, trails, and roads. Today, nearly the entire track follows forest trails, crossing paved roads at just four places. Sticking mostly to the valleys and passing among and between the mountains, the route leads through the heart of the Adirondacks at an average elevation of around 1,800 feet. Of course, averages can be deceiving. At the highest point, the trail reaches just over 3,000 feet, and a stretch in the West Canada Lakes Wilderness bumps along at close to 2,500 feet for many miles, which is why the NPT Trail Guide notes that May snowstorms can be expected there. Most long-distance hiking routes are all about the mountains, progressing from summit to summit. But the defining characteristic of the NPT is water. Lakes, ponds, rivers, streams, and bogs Water is a constant companion on the route. Most, but not all, of the big streams have bridges. Even so, there are probably a half dozen crossings that might require wading at times of high water. But, even if you set aside the dozens of streams you'll cross, any expectation of walking the NPT and keeping your boots dry is wildly optimistic. There are countless wet stretches, and beavers are constantly adding new ones. As of 2023, there's only one beaver-flooded section that has to be waited, but next year, who knows? Lean-tos are another defining characteristic of the NPT, and currently there are 36 lean-tos along the route. Back in the old days, lean-tos were more than just a convenience— A lightweight tent weighed 20 pounds, and you cooked over a fire, probably using a cast-iron frying pan. Nowadays, you might be able to do the entire route sleeping only in lean-tos, but arriving at a lean-to at the end of a long day to find it occupied would be mighty disappointing. Besides, most of the time there are a few bugs to contend with. Nearly everyone carries a tent. but. Crowding is really not an issue, and walking for two or three days along the trail without meeting a soul is common. On a recent October trip over the Cold River section and down past Long Lake, I saw just three people in four days, and that was towards the end of the trip. The NPT is a gem, a crown jewel, but I'm not worried about giving away the secret. The distances, the bugs, the rain, and the mud provide a reliable level of deterrence. A few sections of trail are used regularly by day hikers and weekend backpackers, but for most of the time, on most of the trail, wild solitude is the compensation. In our world, that's as good as gold. Yes,
yourself like me Though you know it's not what you need I wonder if you feel like I do Doing all you can to be true Ooh, it's not hard to get lost At least not for me sound. 